in Egypt they had a system for fractions and they used what we nowadays call unit fractions. A unit fraction is a fraction like a half or a third or a fourth or a fifth, a fraction that has one in the numerator. Uh, aside from all these unit fractions, they also had a symbol for the fraction two thirds. When you only have unit fractions and you want to express something, like nowadays we talk about three fourths, but since they don't have this idea of three fourths, they would write it as a sum of unit fractions. Now, one way to do that is a fourth plus a fourth plus a fourth, but they wouldn't do it that way. They would not repeat their unit fractions. So three fourths they would write as a half plus one fourth or sometimes, or for our videos, we we'll just write the fractions next to each other, one-half, one-fourth, which means a half plus one-fourth. If they wanted to do a multiplication problem, uh, for instance, ten times one-fifth, let's say, so we could do this, like we did multiplication before, we can make sort of a times tables for one-fifth. So one times one-fifth is one-fifth. Now when they go to two, our instinct is to double this one-fifth and call it two-fifths, but they don't really, they don't have a, they can't write two-fifths. But they do have a chart. This is a chart from something called the Rhine Papyrus where they have, they call it the 2 over n table from the Rhine Papyrus. So what it is, is a way of writing fractions that have 2 in the numerator as a sum of distinct unit fractions. So over here, when we want to do 2 fifths, we don't write 2 fifths. Instead, we look at our chart, and it says here that 2 fifths is equivalent to 1 third plus 1 fifteenth. So over here, I wouldn't write 2 fifths. Instead, I'd write 1 third, 1 fifteenth. Now when I double each of these, one-third becomes two-thirds, one-fifteenth becomes two-fifteenths, and for that we need to go back to the chart and find the two-fifteenths, which evidently equals one-tenth plus one-thirtieth. So I come back over here and write one-tenth, one-thirtieth. Now I move on to eight. It's when you double two-thirds, you get one and a third. Now, doubling one-tenth, if you go to this chart, you can see that the denominators are all odd numbers. The reason that is, is because doubling a fraction with an even denominator can be accomplished by just dividing the denominator by 2. So 1 over 30 doubles to 1 15th, 1 over 10 doubles to 1 fifth. So 10 is 8 plus 2, which means for 10, it's the sum of all these. I'm just going to write 1, 1 third. I'll use this, I like to put them in order. One third, one fifth, one fifteenth, one fifteenth. And we could simplify this a bit. Um, one and two thirds. These two fifteenths could actually be written as one tenth plus one over thirty if you want. So the one fifth there. And at this point, well, for us, we could just do common denominator of 30. So 20 over 30 plus 6 over 30 plus 3 over 30 plus 1 over 30. This becomes 2. That, that whole thing becomes 30 over 30. So it's 2. And one, 10 times 1 fifth is 2, as we know. Uh, incidentally, it seems that the Egyptians knew a lot of like cool facts about unit fractions, so they would have known that one fifth plus one tenth plus one thirtieth equaled one third. They would have just replaced it and been able to get this answer without doing their common denominators. And that's how you use the two over n chart to multiply a fraction by an integer.